Yo, what's happening, my beautiful people? Yeah, I'm stretching out. Today, we're talking about the end line sweat. And this can go both ways. I've never received so many hate messages for my wing play. And I've never received so much praise for my wing play this year in terms of how to cut inside, what skills to use and abuse, and how to combine everything, what to look for. And we're going to talk about that in this video. If you like it, you know what to do. If you've got any questions, oh, what pass are you using there? How did you set that up? What were you looking for? Do you need other tutorials and tips? Do you need a detailed guide? Let me know in the comments down below. Let me give you an idea what type of love and appreciation I receive on a daily basis for my end line sweat. Let me give you some examples. Mike, you should get cancer. And if the cancer doesn't get to you, what's your P.O. box? Let me send you over some bleach. That doesn't seem like a good way to go out. And if cancer, no, no bleach drinking, if they didn't do the trick, one of your favorites in the last few weeks, Mike, eat this dick up! Eat this dick up! And they say it like that. I've got ad libs that are being sent my way. I don't know if the Migos is getting this dick eating trend. I'm not sure what's going down. Just before we get into the gameplay, if you guys are interested in making your own custom snapbacks, hats, beanies, check this out, man. No parking. You guys know I'm never going to be about that park the bus. I also made a bronze bench hat. I might be able to link these designs. If you guys want this exact design, let me know. But I'm going to put links down below. Catbeast.com. Dirty Mike 10. Get you 10% off. Uh, these are great quality. Catbeast.com. Design your own custom snapbacks and hats. Oh, yeah. It's that time again. And we're going to talk about the power sprint, but I did want to mention very quickly, if you think that EA should include exclusive legends on the PlayStation and the Xbox, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll put together a poll, because EA has made some changes here from suggestions that I brought to my channel. I don't know if I influenced it, or if other people in the community helped that out, but I'm just saying it happened. And the first freeze frame, why the power sprint works. And the power sprint is just attacking the space, and you need to watch your opponent's defender. Because a lot of people love to use uh, the defender either they're, they're, they're gonna back off and anticipate a skill move or a cut inside or two they don't do anything they let the AI defend for them and a lot of people ask me Mike how do you beat the AI how do you beat someone holding contain this is one of those ways to do so as you hit the rewind and that's why you see me run the lines quite frequently because I notice my opponent is not defending and I feel like I don't want this this is not doctor disrespect I don't want to see you just let the AI do it for you. I understand they're overpowered, but I don't like that. You need manual defending, and you can attack someone who's containing. And you can see when they kind of turn your body. Now here's a good example. Watch the defender. When, when players back off or they turn their body, they're either jockeying or containing. Both of those scenarios, you know how to react. If they're jockeying, that means they're manually defending. So you can kind of read how your opponent's doing, shifting left, shifting right, or you could use a skill move at that point. And if they're not jockeying, they're containing straight up and down, no problem. You got an idea what's going down. You can just attack them by running. Because skill moves do not work on the AI. Uh, I've said it once, I've said it twice. And, and here's a good example. When the defender turns his body, attack. When he squares off, and you can rewind this, you can watch it again, you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about if you didn't notice it going into the freeze frame. And when you're looking at the pass across, the majority of my pass across uh, goals are going to come with just the normal, ordinary A or, or X pass, just depending on what platform you're using. I do like to use the driven pass, and I might make an entire dedicated video why I use this and don't use this. And if you want to see that, you have to let me know. Uh, the second area here, we're looking at more end line sweat. And I score a lot of corner kicks, and I've got a lot more examples actually coming up shortly at the end of the video. But from corners, it's great to use the end line because it protects you. If they hit the ball, if they take it away, either they're trapped or it's going out for another corner kick. So you get another restart, you get another opportunity to score that corner. So if you can get down that end line, it's going to be a good look. And we're talking about the scoop turn here where I've made a couple tutorials talking about the scoop turn in more details. And it's just about reading the defender. So I can see there, I believe it's Smalling. He's trying to anticipate. He showed me what direction. So we're going to do one quick scoop turn. We're attacking. And then you're looking for that layoff. Getting down the line, whether you're outside the box or inside the box, has so much value in FIFA 17, mainly because the AI does too much. If you guys are sitting at home like, Mike, this, this is sweaty, bro. This is gross. Don't put this kind of video out. Don't put this. No, it'll help you. It will help you beat the hose. I realize that custom formations are gone now. But if those were still around, this is a great way to try to beat when there's an overload of bodies. You have to do a pass across or someone who's parking the bus. If you can get inside the box and you can hit 
a pass across or you can square it or you can tramp it. It changes everything for you. It allows you to get an automatic goal. If the goalkeepers are acting a fool, Butlin's on his A game. This is the way. And I'm just demonstrating more scoop turns, kind of how to take it into space. Uh, and then also, of course, the pullback there, which is the body feint. Uh, and from the body feint position, it's always going to be that diagonal, by the way, for, in these examples. There's a money position, and you're going to see it here. And I call it the recovery man. So see where that man is recovering, he's trying to overcompensate and get in front of you, thinking that you're going to cross it ahead. That is the best time, and I want to stress this, the best time, there's not a better scenario for the reverse body feint, where you hit that diagonal, you lay it off, and after hitting that reverse diagonal, I actually find that in more situations, uh, the best choice or the most optimum choice, the most effective choice for that layoff is going to be that driven pass. So after you've pulled it back, driven pass, which is RB and A or R1 and X. I don't have the controllers, but that, that's correct. And that's just a driven across the, the face of the goal. It just seems after you've switched angles there that that is typically the more effective option. In this freeze frame, we're still using the body feints, but I'm using the actual body feint, not the reverse, the classic. And in this scenario, I wanted to showcase, I've got a few goals that I've scored like this. There's nothing that can do, for nothing can happen for me negatively in that scenario because if he takes the ball it goes out for a corner kick that's it worst case scenario i get a corner kick best case i'm going down that sideline i'm attacking my opponent i'm going to be able to score goals and that's what i'm all about i want to be efficient this year especially with fet champs you need to kind of have some built-in sweat that doesn't mean you have to hold the ball versus your opponent i'm not broadcasting that i'm not co-signing that i'm not i'm not a fan of the park the bus but being able to take advantage of somebody who doesn't know how to defend or someone who is parking the bus, you've got to be able to do it. Uh, I've got a couple different shielding examples, but with the shield, it's more about waiting for the pass to get to the wing. I know that first, that wasn't really a freeze frame, but the first little hullet movement there, I got lucky where I kind of I backed into him and I was able to turn the corner. But I love this freeze frame because I've got one, two, three, four, five bodies around me. It's not a good time for me to attack, even with Ronaldo. It's tough. But a little bit of shielding, and then I've got people overlapping. This is the ultimate counterattack. And I want to be able to score here, and you get down the line. You're going to be able to lay it off. You have to wait for those runners. And that's where the shield comes in handy, even for scoring the end line sweat. And I named it the end line sweat because it has to be. People are like, Mike, your end line sweat game is it's gross, man. Like, when, you, when you're talking about keeping it dirty, is this what you really meant? This is what you're really about. What did you do before you started the end line sweat? How can you celebrate this type of gameplay? Like, bro, I'm going for wins, and the hoe bags are out every weekend. Uh, good luck to everyone playing the weekend league. I know that it is also a mess. Uh, I hope everyone's doing amazing, but I, I, I'm very nervous coming into this weekend. And we got some more freeze frames here. You guys know what I'm about. And it's often about understanding the spacing in terms of how to attack and how not to attack. Is it time for a sprint? Is it time for a skill? Uh, this is the Berber spin, which you guys have been very familiar with. You cannot make this predictable. That's all I can stress about the Berber is if you do this once, then don't do it again. It's almost gotten to that level of uh, predictability because it's a beautiful skill, but you have to incorporate it within your gameplay. And it gives you that beautiful, uh, I've used beautiful too much here, it gives you the, the angle. And that angle allows you to attack, that angle allows you to pass, it allows you to shoot. Uh, and that's because you're typically moving uh, perpendicular with the Burba spin. You could move from a diagonal as well, I suppose, which is a little more complicated. But the Burba's kind of risk to reward, you've got to measure it because it does show the ball. And you guys asked me about corner kicks, and I've done a couple tutorials covering this type of corner. But I still get asked about my pace control, also known as the face of dribble, where you're using the L2, R2, or the LT, RT. And in this situation, where you just saw the freeze frame, I ran on the sideline. When you hit the LT, RT, then on the left analog stick, your stick game has to be good here, all right? That's what you should tell the ladies. Your stick game is good. Uh, but your stick game, you're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it's very quick. But I, I think it's difficult uh, for people sometimes to grasp. And while you're going back and forth, you're looking at this front man. The key is reading the front defender. The guy that's always going to run out at you. You have to beat him to make this work. Uh, ideally, if you can go down the line, perfect. You're not always going to be able to go down the line. People are going to overplay that. And that's why you have to look. A lot of people don't adjust. And I've always taken pride in having good psyche. 
And that's the only way I know how to describe it. Good psyche, where I feel like we're in a 50-50, I can outthink you. And some of that's via practice, some of that's via experience, which is kind of similar there. And some of it's just via um, where, where you adjust just a little bit quicker, something you do well naturally. And for me, I feel that I've just got good psyche. Like, And this deals with turns and anticipation uh, and getting to the right places on the pitch. I've talked about it in a couple previous videos, but FIFA is more so about defending positions, not necessarily just defending the actual player. And you see another layoff there. Appreciate that, Robin. That man has been aging for a long, long time. I think Robin's actually getting old now, but I can still remember the days when he was at Chelsea. Dude was like 25, 26, looking 35, 36. Could be your dirty uncle. I don't know why, but he's got to be a dirty, flopping uncle. I love him as a player, though. Very talented, very dynamic. And the last couple examples, nothing too crazy. I just wanted to show you some examples of just normal passing. Picking out the right pass will allow you to get down to the sideline. It's that simple. You don't always have to have skill moves. You don't always have to run and attack. Something that I make a mistake in when I'm playing FIFA from time to time is I don't simplify the game quite enough. Sometimes I add the extra skill, the flair, the little razzle-dazzle, and at times it's just easier to make the simple play, the pass uh, and move or the one-two and just create that space. And the last thing I want to bring up is I don't use the triple tap. And you didn't see it in these examples for a reason. Very rarely. I should say, if I did 20 pass across positions or scenarios, I would say out of 20, maybe one. That's it. But if you enjoyed it, drop a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. Happy to have you. Thank you, my friends. Endline Sweat King. Title. Mine. Maybe. Peace.